Tesla reported uh, weaker than expected profit as auto sales fell for the second quarter in a row. On the com uh, company's conference call, Elon Musk provided an update on the planned unveiling of the robo-taxi. We postponed the sort of robo-taxi or the sort of product uh, uh, unveil by a couple months where, it, where it's shifted to 1010, so the 10th of October. Um, and this is because I, I wanted to make some important changes that I think would improve the, the vehicle, the, 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 the sort of the robo taxi, the thing that, the thing that we're, the main thing that we're going to show. And, and we're also going to show off a couple of other things. Joining us now, Dan Flax, Newberger Berman, a senior research analyst. Uh, it, it, there's some interesting things in, in here, uh, Dan, and there is competition. Uh, on the same day that GM is delaying uh, a new Buick EV, uh, Tesla did cite competition as one of the reasons that uh, buyers were paying less for some of Tesla's core products. Where, where's the con who, who is a competitor to Tesla? And if Tesla's having problems, what EV maker can you count on that's, that's not going to have problems in this environment? Good morning, Joe. There are clearly cyclical headwinds. Uh, there are pockets of weakness in the consumer. Others, uh, Western manufacturers, have struggled uh, to, to really scale some of their EV products. And so as they uh, cut price, that puts overall pressure on the market. I think what's important for Tesla, though, is their ability to innovate, to continue to bring down costs. And that enables them to bring out uh, lower priced models as we think about the next 12 to 24 months which can help drive improved demand. You take that and you couple it with uh, being able to deliver uh, uh, over-the-air updates like uh, full self-driving. And so you have an incremental revenue and high margin layer on top. So I think the name is attractive at current levels. The, uh, I didn't even realize this, uh, Dan. This is just staggering to me. So a bright spot for Tesla was that they actually sell regulatory credits to other car makers that aren't meeting emission requirements. And revenue from those credits, which is pure profit, was $890 million in the second quarter. That's more than half of the operating income of Tesla came from selling emission credits to other automakers that, that, <laughs> that are failing to meet the emission standards. This is like crazy. Can I, can I ask what that, that means that's if, nutty. if a Trump administration comes in and then gets rid of or lowers those emission standards? Does that hurt Tesla's profitability then? It would have I to think have. the focus, I think the focus is is going to be uh, on making innovative cars that that consumers will 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 love and and uh, want to buy more of over the next few years. The emissions credits. Uh, the political backdrop, clearly, uh, that could change. But I think you're seeing the company, uh, it has a very strong balance sheet. They generate cash flow in, in some of the markets globally. They're different uh, uh, drivers for demand. Clearly, China's, I think, a very interesting market there, even with uh, fierce competition. So to, even with the benefit from credits, I still think the focus is on uh, the car sales themselves, the units, which should improve next year, in my view. Well, then we must be sort of in the waning stages of, of whatever you want to call this, this kind of a hiatus in, in EV sales, because right now they're making innovative cars. And they're still, you know, they ask Elon Musk, would you uh, make less expensive vehicles, cut, cut down on some of the, I don't know, the extras on some of these versions. And he, he doesn't want to do that. So they got innovative vehicles. They're the market leader. Uh, and you still saw operating income down, what, uh, or profit tumble 45 percent. So it's all fine and good to say they're going to keep doing it, Dan. But uh, you're saying we're at the end of this, uh, uh, I don't know, bump in the road for Tesla? We're, we're nearer the end than the beginning? Joe, we're in between two product cycles. So you had the Model 3, which was very successful. And I think what you'll see over the next 12 to 24 months is, is a lower cost car and also a new platform. And so we're in between product cycles. The key is their ability to bring down cost, uh, ha have a $20,000 plus vehicle. Uh, we're now in the 30s and above. And so if you're able to bring down cost, that can appeal to more buyers. And clearly, uh, the range, the technology, the features and functionality should continue to improve. Even in a $20,000 plus car, it should be a differentiated experience 
which I think I, uh, we'll see what we get, but I think customers could like that, which could help drive better growth. But I mean, Becky makes a good point about a change in administration. I mean, even with a, a pro EV administration, what happened to the build out with all the charging stations? What, 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 what's going on there? And, and you need that. You needed the infrastructure. And, and even in a friendly administration, it's, it's like at a snail's pace. They're continuing to build the infrastructure. The network is incredibly powerful. In fact, that's why you're seeing others work with Tesla as they try to ramp, uh, in some cases, their own EV uh, businesses. The network is important. I do expect them to continue to build that out. The key is they do have the financial flexibility to do that. So if you have the network, you have the cars, and you have incremental features that can get delivered uh, over the coming years uh, via over-the-air updates, you have what I think will be a very durable business, uh, which can help drive the stock over the next one to two years. Dan, just, I mean, the, the reason I think it's so interesting is because Elon Musk is definitely throwing his support behind Trump. Uh, the Biden administration has not been very nice to Elon Musk. They didn't invite him to the EV meetings, and I think that that really uh, struck a chord with him very early on. But I guess the question is, would the Biden administration policies be better for Tesla and therefore his net worth? And is he going against that by his support? I mean, it, it's it, totally possible. Becky, as I think about the, the really the balance of the decade and, and, and into the next decade, we're likely to have a variety of, of, of different government policies, both here in the United States and globally. And Tesla is going to have to navigate the dynamics. Elon Musk will, of course, support uh, whomever he prefers. But mm -hmm. for his, his business and the stock price, I think what will matter most is, is innovating, uh, uh, creating vehicles, lower cost ones that people want. And I think he can and Tesla can flourish in that environment through a variety of administrations, both here and abroad. So, so will that be enough to uh, to compete effectively against uh, Chinese EVs or, or, or will there be a need for uh, I don't know. Again, we're saying if it's a Trump administration for for big tariffs on Chinese vehicles or else there's going to be a bloodbath, I think he said, in the auto market. I think you could certainly see uh, tariffs both here and in Europe. Um, even even were there to be tariffs, I expect the market here domestically and in Europe to remain competitive. And there are going to be other markets globally where Tesla competes uh, with the Chinese automakers and, of course, in China. And so I think they need to bring their costs down. That will enable them to compete with the Chinese uh, OEMs. And even if there are tariffs here in the United States and elsewhere, the company still needs to innovate. The market, I think, will still be competitive.